Amen. If you have your Bible, if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, Amen. We ask that you come and go with us to the book of Romans. The book of Romans. Thank you, Lord. Book of Romans, the eighth chapter. The eighth chapter of the book of Romans. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The eighth chapter of the book of Romans. Let your fingers walk down to that 28th verse. Romans, the eighth chapter. Looking at that 28th verse. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. That's enough. Amen. Thank you. Amen. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. If I can bother you a little bit this afternoon. I'd like to speak to you from a thought today. Your setback is a setup for your comeback. Your setback is a setup for your comeback. Amen. In this, in this life that we live, we are going to have some disappointments, some discouragements, some troubles, some trials, some tribulations, some perils, some problems that are going to occur. And even though we may be saved, that does not exempt us from the sufferings in this world. And many times while we are going through our stuff, we can't see how we're going to get through it. And a lot of times we don't even know where we're going to end up. And we can tell others how to trust in the Lord, pray and keep the faith. But in our own hearts, when we are going through, sometimes we find ourselves questioning God, asking, Lord, why me? Well, I wish I had some real folk in here. And we all know that it's, it's, it's not good sometimes to, to question God when we're going through some things. But, but, but truth be told, sometimes things get so hard. Things press down so, so hard. They get so weighty sometimes. And, and it seems like we, we, we're going through a long time. Sometimes it makes us ask God the question, Lord, why? And we can look around and we can see others who aren't who aren't saved, who aren't professing anything, who aren't trying to live anything. And, and they're being prosperous. And, and it seemed like they look at us and they're laughing at us because of what we don't have or what we are going through. 
And sometimes the snickers and the sneers that they give us and, and, and it seem like they're rejoicing when we fall or when we're going through as though they're telling us or asking us the question, now where is your God? Where is that Jesus that you spend every Sunday and every Wednesday night going to worship and praise? And now you going through this stuff right here. Where is your God right now? But my brothers and sisters, I just want to tell you that these things are nothing more than setbacks. Amen. And a setback, if you don't know, a setback is a slowing in progress. A setback is a, a temporary defeat. Amen. And too many of us, when setbacks come into our lives, we want to throw in the towel and give up. Amen. We, we lose hope and it shakes our faith. Are y'all going to be real with me? And when those things happen to us, that's what the enemy wants us to do. The enemy wants us to feel defeated. Yes, yes, yes. And every now and then you get into a situation where the, the, the troubles of this world can make you feel defeated. But I came to encourage you today not to give up. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. But hang in there just a little while longer because God is not through with you yet. Amen, somebody. So he sent me here to miss, but to tell you this morning that your setback is nothing more than a setup. Boy, y'all should have been happy right then. A amen. In other words, God had already planned for you to go through what you're going through in order to get you somewhere where he wants you to be. Yeah. Hey, amen. Wait, hey, amen. Maybe you don't know what a setup is. See, a setup is an arrangement. Something that is structured ahead of time, something that has already been positioned and prepared. It's already been determined. That, that, that's what a setup is. So, so, so the setback that you're going through is actually a setup. What you're saying, Carlisle, what you're going through, God has already determined that you be there in order for you to get where he's going. Are, are y'all with me? Touch your neighbor and tell him it's a setup. Oh, y'all didn't say it like you mean it. Touch him on the other side and say it's a setup. Amen. It's already been arranged. It's already been planned. God has already set it up. God has already predetermined where you are and where you're going. Amen. That's why Paul, after he wrote Romans 8 and 28 and said that 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 we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord to them who are the called according to his purpose that's why he said in that 29th and 30th verse for whom he foreknew he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren moreover whom he did predestinate them he also called and whom he called them he also justified and he, and them he also justified them he also glorified so I know that God has already planned where I need to be I just got to go through the process to get there so when I face my setbacks I then got to realize that it's only a setup and I know that it's God who has done the setting up. That's why Paul said, what shall we say to these things? If God be for me. If God be for me. If God be for me. Who can be against me? Are, are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? God has already determined what we would go through to get to where he wants us to be that sickness that you're going through it looked like a setback it was only a setup that financial trouble that you're going through it looks like a setback 
but it was only a setup. That trouble in the family, it looks like a setback, but it was only a setup. And baby, it was a setup because God knows where you are, He knows what He's doing, and He knows where He's going to take you. Can I get a witness in the house today? Maybe you need somebody else to witness to you. Come here, children of Israel. I told you last week they had been in Egypt for 430 years in slavery and crying out to the Lord, Lord, deliver us, Lord, deliver us. And he raised up Moses and sent Moses into Egypt. And, and Pharaoh was so hard hardened that God would touch his heart and cause him to change his mind. God sent 10 plagues through Egypt for him to let him go. And on that tenth, when God told Moses, he will surely let my people go. God sent the death angel to him, but the death angel passed over the houses in the land of Goshen because they were covered in the, in the blood of the lamb. And Moses brought them out, led them out of Egypt richer than they were when they were in, in, in Egypt. Are y'all with me in here? The Bible says, the Bible says that God did not lead them the short way into the promised land. God could have took them a straight shot into the promised land, but instead God took them the long way around because the short way had enemies such as the Philistines. And God knew it would not be good for Israel to fight or to be in battle when he first delivered them. So he took them a long way around it, it, by way of the Red Sea. Uh, are y'all with me? He took them the way of the Red Sea. Now, while they were going to the Red Sea, God hardened Pharaoh's heart one more time. And Pharaoh thought, these jokers were making bricks for us. We, 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 don't, we don't need to be making bricks for ourselves. Let's go back and get those children of Israel and bring them back to Egypt. Are, are, are you with me? Amen. Now, the children of Israel are down at the Red Sea. They're making it to the Red Sea. There are mountains on this side and mountains on that side. And when they turn back, here come Pharaoh and his army coming up behind them. They're in a mess. And they're looking at Moses and they're crying out to Moses. Now, you, uh, what, what, what happened, Moses? You, we, we didn't have graves in Egypt, so you brought us out here to die. You should have left us in Egypt. Why don't we just give up and go on back with Pharaoh? But I heard Moses say, Moses said, fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. For the Egyptians that you see this day, you'll never see again. He said, you won't even have to fight because the Lord is going to fight for you. Yeah. Amen. Are, are, are y'all seeing, seeing the picture now? A -a Amen. Watch this. Every now and then, God will allow a setback to make you stand still to realize his setup. <laughs> Sometimes God will put you in a place where you can't move and you know that you can't get out of it. And the only way you're going to get out of it is that the Lord has to come get you out. Boy, I wish I had some witnesses in here. A amen. They were surrounded. They had mountains on either side. They had the Red Sea in front of them. They had Pharaoh's army behind them. And I want, you to, I want you to notice, this was a setback for them, but at the same time, it was a setup. How, how can you say it was a setup, Pastor? How can you say it was a setup? These were God's people. They shouldn't be in a mess. But you got to understand, God is the one that set them up. Are you telling me that sometimes God will allow a setback to come in our lives to set us up? Yes, he will. How can I prove this? The Bible says that when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they weren't following Moses. They were following the cloud. Y'all, y'all, y'all miss that. They were following the cloud during the day. 
and the pillar of fire at night. So they were going where God led them. And when they got to the Red Sea, God is the one that led them there. So God led them into a mess. <laughs> Sometimes God will lead you into a mess to show you that without him, there is no other way out. That's why when David was taking inventory of Israel and how blessed Israel was, he wrote down in Psalm 124, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, may Israel say, and some of us in here, we know that we can testify that if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, some of us would be in the graveyard today. Some of us would have lost our mind. Some of us would have been living on the streets. But because God set us up. He's the one who had to come and get us out. Can I get some help in here? Amen. They found themselves surrounded and it seemed like it was all over. But then God showed up. That's one thing about God when he, he sets you up for a setback. It's his plan to show up in the setup and show out. Are, are y'all with me? And whenever God showed up for Israel, God showed out. The Bible says that when Moses was there in front of the Red Sea and it seemed like they were surrounded, they had a setback, which actually was a setup. God said, Moses, what you got in your hands? Lift up that rod toward the Red Sea. And when he lifted up that rod toward the Red Sea, the Bible said God caused an east wind to come. And the east wind did two things. First of all, when the east wind blew, it divided the water. The second thing that the east wind did, it dried up the seabed. So they walked across on dry land. Boy, I wish I had some help in here. They walked across on dry land. And watch this. When they walked across on dry land, where God had brought them out, when the enemy came behind him, the same thing that he delivered them out of, it caused the enemy to be drowned into. Boy, I wish I had some help in here. Amen. In a setup sometimes, in a setup, God will allow you to go through some things that he'll deliver you out of that other people won't make it out of. Can I get some help in here? Amen. So now that setback was a setup. So what did God set them up for? He set them up for a comeback. Now a comeback is a return to a previous successful state. Usually with more than you had before. Let, 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 me, say, let me say that again. A comeback is a return to a previous successful state, usually with more than you had before. Are, are, are y'all with me? God puts you in a position that may cause you to begin to sink. And the only way that you can come back is that you have to depend on him totally. When Peter saw Jesus walking on the water, Peter cried out, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. Jesus said, come. Jesus told him to come. Peter stepped off the boat and began to walk on water. But the wind started blowing. The water started hitting him up against the leg. And he started paying attention to that and took his eye off Jesus. And he started dipping down, sinking. But before he sank, he cried out one time, Lord, save me. He felt that it was a setback that he was about to drown. But it was only a setup for him to depend on the one who called him. 
And when he said, Lord, save me, it was time for his comeback. Jesus reached out, picked him up, turned him around, and placed him back in the boat. Ain't the Lord all right? So the Lord will put you in a position that seems like a setback, but it's really a setup for your comeback. And I stopped by to tell you today not to worry about your setback. Because God is just setting you up for your comeback. That's why Paul says in Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. To them who are the called according to to his purpose. Amen. And the children of Israel were not the only ones who experienced a setback. But in actuality, it was a setup for a comeback. Amen. When we call on Brother Joseph, Joseph said, I was a dreamer. And the Lord had given me dreams where my brothers and my mother and father would bow down to me one day. And when Jacob sent him to check on his brothers, the Bible said that they got sick of Joseph spying on them. So they got Joseph and, and they put him in a pit. They were going to kill him, but Reuben said, no, we ain't going to have his blood on our hands. And the Bible says that they sold him into slavery. They sold him to a band of Ishmaelites. And it seems like since Joseph was a dreamer, Joseph would wonder, Lord, what's going to happen to my dream? Because this right here is a setback. Amen. But Joseph did not realize that that what looked like a setback was actually a setup. Because if God gave him a dream, God was going to fulfill his promise. Can I get a witness in here? The Bible says that Potiphar bought Joseph. He was in Potiphar's house and the wife lied on Joseph. And he was thrown in the prison. And I can imagine Joseph was still wondering, Lord, I know what you gave me to drink. Now, I'm, am I, it's a setback that I've been sold into slavery and now I'm in prison. He didn't realize it was a setup. The Bible says that there was a baker and a butler that belonged to Pharaoh who had some dreams and they couldn't interpret them and they came to Joseph and, and the baker gave his dream first and said this and the butler gave his dream to Joseph and said this and Joseph looked at the baker and said what your dream means is that in three days you're going to be beheaded. He told the butler in three days you're going to be restored. He told the butler, when you're restored, remember me. Remember me. Hey, yeah. remember, me. remember me. When you're restored, when you're brought back into the house of Pharaoh, remember me. The Bible says two years later, when the butler or the cupbearer had been restored, even though Joseph was still sitting in prison, after his setback, that was a setup. The king or the pharaoh had a dream. He dreamed about the cows coming out of the ocean and, and eating up the, the skinny cows, eating up the fat cows. And he had another dream that was very similar and nobody could tell what was going on. But the butler remembered Joseph in his setback, which was a setup. Now it's time for his comeback. The butler remembered that there's a man in prison who told me about my dream. And Pharaoh, I'm sure he can tell you about yours. The Bible says that Pharaoh called Joseph in and when Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream and told him what he needed to do, the Bible says that Pharaoh made Joseph the second leader of the whole world. Ain't the Lord all right? God will allow you to get into a setback to set you up for your comeback. 
Ain't the Lord all right? Because the same ones that sold him into slavery were the same ones who had to come back and beg him for bread. Don't tell me God won't make your enemy your foot. Amen. He's not the only one. He's not the only one. Come here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were true worshipers. They loved the Lord. They praised God. They loved being in Jerusalem. They go, loved going into the temple. But one day, Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians came through. They took Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel, and they took them from their homeland and took them into Babylon to make them Chaldeans. Boy, that looks like a setback. I've been moved out of my homeland and put somewhere in a strange land. That's a setback. Can't come to the house of the Lord like I want to. That's a setback. I miss my family. That's a setback. But in actuality, it was a setup. The Bible says in that third chapter, Nebuchadnezzar had raised up his golden statue and told everybody that when the music played, I want you to bow down. But these three Hebrew boys, even though they knew that they had had a setback, I feel somewhere in their spirit they knew that it was only a setup because they said, oh king, we will not bow. So I guess you gotta throw us in the fiery furnace. But you go ahead and throw us in the fiery furnace. We ain't worried about it because the God that we serve <laughs> is able to deliver us. In other words, King, I know that this looks like a setback for us, but it's only a set up for us because the God that we serve is able to give us a comeback. Ain't the Lord all right? The Bible says that he heated it up seven times harder and threw them in. Tied them up and threw them in. He knew he threw three men into the fiery furnace. But when he stood up and looked in the fiery furnace, <laughs> did not we throw three men in the fiery furnace? But I see a fourth man in the fiery furnace and he looks like the son of God. Well, what is this telling me here? In my setback, in my setback, God won't leave me by myself. Whatever God sets me back in to set me up, the Lord will be with me. Yea, though I walk through a valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Amen. God brought them out. So your setback is a setup for your comeback. And I can't leave you without giving you one more example. I got to call on Jesus himself. The Bible says that he came down through 40 and two generations. This was God himself wrapped up in flesh. Can I get a witness in here? He was raised in the way of the Lord. Had God fearing parents in Moses and in, in Joseph and Mary. The Bible says that he was reared in the way of the Lord. At 12 years old, he entered the temple for the first time, questioning and answering doctors and lawyers, and they were fascinated at this young man. And when Mary and Joseph found him, said, Son, we've been looking for you. And Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. Ain't hey, my Lord all right? The Bible says at 30 years old. Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan and the Holy Ghost descended upon him in the form of a dove. And God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. The Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness and he was tried of Satan three times. And every time he used the word of God, it is written and defeated Satan. Jesus was on his way. Jesus was getting popular. He came out the wilderness giving sight to blind eyes, making deaf ears to hear again, making lame legs to walk again. Took two fish and five loaves of bread, fed a hungry multitude. Ain't the Lord all right? 
The Bible says that Jesus was rising in popularity. But just because you're rising in popularity, it doesn't mean that everybody is going to like you. Ain't the Lord all right? The Bible says that Jesus was on his way. But Jesus himself knew that his life was a setup. He knew that one day there would come a time where everything would turn back on him. Ain't the Lord all right? I heard that Jesus just kept on doing the will of the Lord. He kept on preaching and teaching God's holy word. He kept on making demons flee out of sinners like us. He kept on healing the sick. He kept on raising the dead. But I heard Jesus tell his disciples one day, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In other words, Jesus was telling them that boys I ain't going to be with you always. Because my whole life has been a setup. Ain't my Lord all right? I heard that Jesus was turned over into the hands of sinful men. He was led from hall to hall. He was whipped all night long. And early on a Friday morning, they put an old rugged cross on his back. This looks like a setback for Jesus. He's supposed to be the son of God. But he's supposed to be the king of the Jews. But it looks like a setback. But it was actually a set up. Because the Bible says that he marched up Golgotha's hill. When he got to the top of that hill, they put nails in his hands. They put nails in his feet. They hung him high and stretched him wide. And somewhere around the ninth hour, he died to the sun refused to shine he died to the moon dripped in blood he died to the earth reeled and rocked like a drunken man now this same Jesus who came born king of the Jews who rose in popularity now is facing a setback in a cold jail set back in a jail called grave he was lying there Friday night but it was all a setup stayed there all day Saturday but it was all a setup stayed there all night Saturday night but it was all a setup but early 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 on Sunday morning his comeback came he got up out of that grave with all power with all power in his hands say yes say yes i talked about to tell somebody today that your setback your sickness your trouble your trials your tribulation everything that you're going through it might look like a setback but i stopped by to tell you that god has set you up to make you come back we have some folks in here today that had a setback in the hospital laying on their backs on their bed of affliction it was all a setback but they're here today walking through these doors because god set you up for your comeback to let somebody know that your redeemer lives he's still a deliverer he's still a healer is there anybody here that knows that my god is able to bring you back he's able to give you a comeback say yes Setback. 
Yo, step back. Yo, step back. It's a setup for your comeback. All set.